Let's talk now to Peter Sand, who's Chief Analyst at Ocean and Air Freight Market Analytics firm Zanita. Good to see you again, Peter. Welcome back to the program. Uh, so, of course, uh, this is not the first time that global supply chains have come under pressure. The stranding of the ever given during the pandemic, for example. How does what's happening now uh, compare to that? Well, during the ever given crisis, uh, when that uh, giant container ship uh, got stuck in the Suez Canal two and a half years ago, all that was needed at that point in time was a, a bigger excavator. What is needed right now is a much more complex uh, resolution to a very, very tricky situation. So this one is more dramatic. It's happening and unfolding over a shorter period of time. And we see also freight rates on the Zanella platform going up by 200% since uh, the most, uh, say, early on escalation of the risk happened mid-December. So lots of uh, shipping companies taking the decision to send their vessels a longer route round. We heard a little bit in that report about how that's affecting some businesses. Uh, just how bad is it? It is affecting small businesses as well as large scale businesses, as also you alluded to before. And I fear that uh, the impact felt on supply chains and the bigger shippers as well as the smaller shippers will get worse before it gets better because we are not at a, say, inverted comma, permanent temporary situation right now. There is still a lot to do for all those logistics providers, freight forwarders, carriers, and of course, the cargo owners in order to make the goods flowing and reach the final destination in due time. So a lot of action still needs to happen also in logistics as we await for, um, say, safe passage to return to the Red Sea. So, of course, this is affecting businesses. Uh, but what about uh, customers, people buying the goods that are on those ships? Uh, this must result in higher costs being passed on to them and delays in them being able to buy what they want. Yeah, when you see uh, costs going up from uh, what once was uh, $1,800 to, to now is $6,000 per box, obviously there is an impact, especially on those goods that may not be higher priced in the first case, because those importers can find it difficult to absorb those extra costs themselves and need to pass it on. So, uh, so in the uh, uh, say most extreme case, obviously there will also be an impact on inflation but uh, but that uh, to that extent that's another we do not expect like a rapid rise in global inflation but uh, but perhaps a little bit of a flatlining uh, that will offset some of the declines that we have seen most recently so some companies are taking the decision to avoid the area altogether what else can they be doing uh, to try and mitigate this situation what we also see carriers doing and what is disrupting supply chains at large is that they are omitting port calls at the origin destinations uh, as well as the destinations. Uh, so, so shippers that uh, that needed cargo to move out of, uh, of uh, say, the northern part of China, South Korea, for instance, may not find it as easy to move those goods as uh, they once did. Uh, but, uh, but obviously. We also see alternatives now getting deployed on uh, on the Senator platform. We see air cargo rates now inching up by 10% over last week. And we see more volumes now being, uh, say, airborne than uh, during the peak before Christmas. So, uh, so there are alternatives deployed now, of course, all with a bigger price tag. And in the end, yeah, that uh, is also impacting consumers at the final hour. Peter, good to talk to you. Thank you for joining us. That's Peter Sand from the air freight market analytics firm Zanetta.